Men den har grammatiken kommer att döda mig. Nine things that I wish I'd known about Swedish before I started learning Swedish. Now it's going to be like a youtube list of thing of going nine to one. Except there is a nine to one in my head. But we're not going to do them in that order. I might do seven, then four, then five. And then I might just go four, three, two. A little bit like Swedish. Sometimes you can predict it. Other times, nah. And if you're learning another language that isn't Swedish, which is... Let's face it, highly likely. Don't worry, you can apply some of these to your language learning as well. As much as I can, I've tried to make these specific to Swedish because I already have a video about things I wish I'd known about language learning in general when I started and I probably need to update that video. But this one, more or less, is just Swedish. Let's try to be fun and let's try to educate the world about Swedish. <laughs> and just before we get into any of that, these videos, I know it looks like I just stand here and piss about, but really, I promise I don't. They take an immense amount of time and effort. And because of that, I appreciate your support either on Patreon or by using my link for 50% off drops, which is a good deal for you as well, or 40% off Speakly, which is also a great deal for you. I appreciate you using any and all of them. All, all of them. All of them I would particularly appreciate, but don't, don't use all of them. I probably don't recommend that. Anyway, it helps me make the videos more more oftener and more better. That's how you say that in whatever language that was. Starting with number six. Yep, there's nine and we're starting with number six. Speaking English while you are otherwise speaking Swedish implies a change of tone. And I don't mean the obvious way that a native English speaker would speak English because they don't know the Swedish and they just say, oh, how do you say this? I mean, Swedes or otherwise fluent Swedish speakers who switch to English for a word or two or maybe even a whole phrase, that implies something about what you're saying. Probably that it's meant a little bit less seriously or that it's a full-on joke. To give you an example, a Swedish friend of mine was describing a friend of his who I guess you would say isn't for everyone. He's the sort of friend who can be great to be around but he can be a little bit of hard work and he said, Han är, jag vet inte, han är liksom en acquired taste. Acquired taste is not normally a phrase we use to describe people. There probably is a way to say that in Swedish. There's certainly a way to get across the idea that a friend can be a little bit hard to be around sometimes. But to say it in English like that when the conversation was very much in Swedish, just show that he's kind of joking. He doesn't mean this too seriously. He just means that he's an acquired taste. Jag vet inte. And that carries throughout a lot of the things that Swedes will switch briefly into English for. English basically implies a less serious tone. If they want to say something really properly and correctly, then they will say it entirely in Swedish. If you went to hear a very formal talk in Stockholm or something, then the whole thing would be in Swedish. But if they were making some kind of joke, a good way to let you know that would would be to switch into English, maybe an American accent, to show that kind of Hollywood style. Can I want to go? That was number six. Let's do number three. Lots of people speak Swedish. What? What? What did you just say? Lots of people speak Swedish. Yes. Don't think that I was a fool before I went into Swedish. I knew that it wasn't a widely spoken language. I expected it to be extremely difficult to find Swedish people to talk to, to practice with. I expected it to almost be impossible because I pretty much sucked at learning German and there's 90 million of those guys. So I thought, well, surely with 10 million native speakers, this must be especially difficult. It's not. 10 million is still a lot more people than I will ever talk to in my entire life. The thing is, when it comes to the number of people you can practice with, 10 million is essentially the same as 90 million. It's more than you actually need. I know that statistically you should just find them around the place less often, but the thing is, if you go around doing things like I do, like speaking to your kids in Swedish and wearing Swedish football jerseys and just generally making your Swedish aura known to the world, the Swedes will come out, especially in summer in Australia. They love it. You just go to the beach in two suburbs of Sydney in particular, that is Bondi and Manly, both beach suburbs of course, in summer, I swear you just go out there and just go, Är det någon svanskar? Yup. Hey. I have met Swedes in the weirdest places. In my third week of learning Swedish, I was wearing my Swedish football jersey and I ran into some people who were speaking what I 
thought was Swedish and it turned out it was actually Norwegian and that's how crappy my Swedish was. I just recognized that it sounded like I should be able to understand it. And I had a conversation with them. Trots att jag inte kunde förstå vad de sa. Then there was the time at a specialized lolly store, what Americans would call a candy store, in like country Australia, like inland, not even near the beach. I don't know what Swedes were doing there. Then there was the time at Australia's only nuclear reactor. I'm not even making that up. Australia has one nuclear reactor. It's used for like medicine and stuff. Swedes there. I don't, they're everywhere. That friend I mentioned before, he's an air conditioning guy. He came to my house to quote for an air conditioner, heard me speaking Swedish to my son. Now we get beers together. You'll find people to talk to. The more minority the language, then generally the more pleased they are that you're learning it because it's so unusual. So there's plenty of people to talk to. It really makes no difference whether we're talking French or Swedish or Norwegian. There's tons of people who will talk to you. It's fine. Moving on to number four. Men and women speak differently. Now, I know that sounds obvious, but I don't just mean that they say different things and that they have different voices. That goes for all languages. I mean, you know the whole Swedish pitch, pitch accent intonation thing? Blah, 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 blah. That whole thing. That is actually different for men and women. I would say that as a general rule, women have more pitch variation in their voice. If you listen to female audiobook narrators and male audiobook narrators, the males are flatter. And when I started forming this theory and eventually I think have confirmed this theory, I found it a little bit disappointing because I like the pitch variation. I like going doop -ba doop -ba doop when I speak as much as I possibly can because as an English speaker, it's not something I'm inclined to do. So I deliberately do it as much as possible. And that makes me sound like a woman. Even sometimes if I really nail how to say something, some native Swedes will say, well, I don't know, there's something not quite right there. And I once actually put to one of them, I said, is it possibly that I sound female, but I've got a male voice? And they were like, yes, I think that is it. It's not a big deal. There's really not that much more I need to say about it. I don't, it doesn't really bother me if I'm going to talk a little bit like a woman. If you're studying Swedish and particularly if you are a female studying Swedish, you should know that you're trying to go for the more varied one. You should try to sound like a female because if you sound like a guy, which is reasonably flat compared to female Swedes, that might sound a bit weird. Not a big problem, like I said, just something to know. And speaking of the controversial topic of men and women and how they might even be different sometimes, Sweden is not as woke as you think. Now it has this reputation of being, for want of a better word, the wokest country in the world. They've done certain things before other countries to a greater extent than other countries. Some of these things you'll agree with, some of them you won't. Some of them people think the whole country is completely useless and it's not actually as dialed up to 11 as you really think. If you watch some of their stand-up comedy and just their sitcoms and these things are like on SVT play like this is like a government endorsed paid for thing for Swedish entertainment saying these things that if Sweden was really number 11 woke as it is perceived to be in some places of the world Th these things wouldn't be allowed. Some of their comedy is actually pretty edgy, at least by Australian standards. I can't say for sure why this is. Basically the fact that the country is quite progressive and has certain attitudes, or at least officially, seems to allow them to make a very clear distinction between making a comedic statement, making something that is meant to make someone laugh and not be taken very seriously, and making a real statement about the world. And as a result, once I really started to dig into Swedish culture and really started to understand things that wouldn't necessarily translate well with subtitles or anything, I started to find a lot of Swedish comedy straight up hilarious. The system has made Sweden the world's fourth largest weapon exporter per capita. Are we four now? And that ties beautifully to number seven, so I have actually deliberately put those two in order. Swedish is not as easy as you think. Now, just before you go breaking your keyboard to tell me how dumb I am in the comments, I understand that from a technical point of view, it's not going to be nearly as hard as a language very far removed from your own. But I guess you could compare it a little bit to like the piano versus the guitar. Now, on the surface of it, which of those seems like the harder instrument? 
they both seem pretty difficult. But if we're talking about like a single note, most of the time on the guitar, you need to do two things at the same time. You need to pluck the string and you need to put your hand on the fret. The fact that the piano is easier to make a single sound on, like you just press a single key and then boom, there's the note, makes the fact that you can do that not very impressive. You can think of that a little bit like Swedish. You can say like a couple of words, you can maybe introduce yourself. Swedes will be like, nah, I guess that was okay. In Swedish, the level that you're expected to reach as an English speaker before they'll be at all impressed by that is that little bit higher because whether they've thought about it or not, they subconsciously know this is kind of similar to your language. On top of that, the accent is very, very difficult. It's basically English with a bunch of different words and no similar pronunciation at all. Like almost none of the sounds are made in exactly the same way, consonants or vowels. And just for reference's sake, I happen to find French much easier. My accent without any practice is much closer to a proper French accent than my Swedish accent ever was before I practiced. And I found that reading novels in French came very quickly when compared with how long it took me in Swedish. And that leads me nicely to number Five, which is that pronunciation is the hardest part of the language and it will never really cease to be hard. Now look, I get it that if you're new to Swedish, you might be sitting there thinking, man, then how grammatiken kommer döda mig? I can understand, and to that I would say, kommer att döda dig. But in all seriousness, the grammar passes, right? You get to a stage where all the grammatical features seem more or less intuitive, or if they don't, then you can sort of take them in your stride pretty easily. Whereas the pronunciation, the better you get at it, the more things you see that you're just not doing right. And it's just very, very difficult. And because of that, I wish that I'd focused on that a little bit more early on, instead of just speaking a whole ton like I did, because although it seems intuitive that the more you speak, the better your pronunciation gets, I think I should have gotten better at listening. If I'd gotten better at listening early, hearing the difference between different sounds, and also just focusing on taking in a whole lot of the language, I think my accent would now be better, or at least I could have saved some time that I've since spent correcting things that I did wrong in my accent. Accent is very hard, and because of that, I just wish I'd focused on that from the get-go. Don't worry, the grammar passes, the pronunciation does not. So do worry. And speaking of learning things early, this is a message both to my former self and to you guys out there who are learning Swedish. Just install the freaking Swedish keyboard on your computer and learn to use it full time. It's way easier from the beginning. I spent three years using the alt code, so alt132 equals air. I was quite fluent at using them. I would use them without even kind of thinking about it, but it's so much quicker to install the proper keyboard and learn where the punctuation and stuff has moved for when you do type in English. And do you guys know how I know you're not doing it? Because when you write in Swedish, every time there's an or, you use or, and every time there's an ear, you use Oh, and every time there's an er, uh, you use oh, no, just die. You guys can't spell. It's not that hard. Just freaking install it. And on your phone, it's even easier. You can switch between the two layouts. I got far so. Sorry about getting a little bit upred over the dark. In all seriousness, if you are typing in Swedish, just install the Swedish keyboard and learn to type in it. It's much easier in the long run. And if you're doing it on a phone or a tablet, again, install the Swedish keyboard and type on it. It's just not that hard. And that was number nine. And that brings me logically to the number two thing that I wish I'd known before I started learning Swedish, which is that Swedish is the language of books and audiobooks. Now think about what an audiobook is for a language learner. As a language learning resource, language learners in the 90s would have cut their limbs off to get a hold of as many audiobooks as exist in Swedish. This is language learning resource gold. Except that in Swedish, it's not at all like gold because there's so freaking much of it, it's more like hydrogen. It's language learning gold if it were as common as hydrogen. Swedes will get any book that is at all popular from pretty much any other language, they will translate it 
and they will record an audiobook, I almost guarantee it, which means that the books you've read before, things like Harry Potter and The Hunger Games and stuff, all of that exists in Swedish and in audiobook form. These are professional narrators, people. They're freaking amazing. And you've got the transcription of it. I mean, what more could you ask for? People are always coming to me saying, oh, there's not many resources for learning Swedish. Well, there's not many resources for Swedish learners specifically, but you don't need that. You've got kids books, Lasse Meyer's Detective Bureau. There's like 186 of them every single word there and you've got a narrator reading it out i don't know what more you could possibly ask for well i guess you could ask for it to be cheaper oh wait no you couldn't because books written to just ordinarily consume in the language are way cheaper than specific language learning resources now thankfully i have realized that in the last 18 months to two years but if i'd realized this from day one i would seriously estimate my swedish to be 10 percent better today those of you who've been keeping score will know that the only one left is number one. You didn't seriously think I'd put number one anywhere but the end, did you? Most resources for learning Swedish suck. Don't use them. Specific resources that I do recommend are things like SVT Play. It's a whole sea of different programs in different genres for different age groups with different kinds of Swedish with Swedish subtitles and they update it faster than you could possibly get through it meaning that it's a bottomless pit of Swedish. You could learn Swedish entirely just from SVT Play, SVT Play if you really wanted to. If you don't want to do that, my other tip is the various ebook and audiobook platforms. I personally use Next Story. There is also Storytel. There is Book Beats. Depending where you are, that may not work. There is also Book Mate. That's better for ebooks themselves. There is so much stuff out there, both in printed form and audio form. You really don't need things that are aimed specifically at Swedish learners. If you are going to use those, Swedish Pod 101's probably Probably the best one I found there is still a specific way to use that that makes it more helpful than if you use it wrong basically but you don't even need that you just need patience time SVT play and one of the other platforms so through this video I've basically been talking as if you're the person who needs to know this and if you're learning Swedish or Danish or Norwegian or to an extent Finnish you do need to know these things if you're just starting out in this I wish I'd known this when I started Swedish and I think these tips can be helpful if you think they can be helpful then leave me a comment saying they can be helpful that is helpful to me that's a lot of times to use the word helpful cheers I'll see you next time hey